Sonic the Fighters, a very average arcade game that I think deserves a sequel. This game was released around the mid-90s and was developed by Sega AM2, the same team that created the Virtua Fighter series. And I know you're saying, Beanie, really? A fighting game that features my childhood characters duking it out? Isn't this ripping off Smash? Yes, silly viewer, this game is similar to Smash Bros. But the joke's on you, because Fighters, or Championship if you're in America, released in June of 1996. Smash Bros. came out in January of 1999. Nintendo ripped off Sega, fight me! Actually, never mind, I can't even punch. It may seem odd to see a fighting game that features Sonic characters, since Sonic is known for his 2D platforming games. But keep in mind, Sonic's been doing weird spin-offs since the beginning. Pinball, racing games, puzzle games, this. But what makes Sonic the Fighters? <coughs> but what makes Sonic the Fighters so interesting is that it's the only Sonic game to dabble into the fighting game genre. The last time you would ever see Sonic featuring in a fighting game would be, you guessed it, Smash Bros. <laughs> How ironic. Anyway, I shouldn't waste any more time talking about the history of this game. Let's finally play Sonic the Fighters. So the gist of the game is that Eggman has built the second version of the Death Egg, the Death Egg 2, and is going to use it to destroy the world. And the only way to stop it is to collect all the 8 Chaos Emeralds. But there's a problem. Each 8 characters has an emerald, so instead of working together to stop the Death Egg 2 and Knuckles' trademark, since you all have them, they're all gonna fight over who gets them. Great. Ah yes, the main menu. Pretty exciting, isn't it? Ah yes, the character select screen. So stylish and simple. You only have 10 seconds left to choose a character, hurry up, TIME'S TICKING! All jokes aside, can we just appreciate how good the character select name is? So yeah, the gameplay. What do you do? You attack or do some special moves. That's kind of it. Yeah, I know, it isn't the most complex fighting game out there. Most fights revolve around who can spam the attack button the most. And with it being easy to spam your enemies with a normal or special move, you can easily end fights in the seconds. So yeah, there's not much skill involved when playing this game. But how about those graphics though? It's a 3D game from the mid-90s, so what'd you expect? It's gonna look blocky like any other game around the 90s, but I kinda like it. It has a certain charm that I really like about these early 3D Sega games. It's why I like games like Sonic R and Virtua Fighter. And the environment, look at it! Tekken was only using images for their backgrounds. But here we have Sonic the Fighters with full 3D arenas. This must have been impressive for the time. Can we listen to the music just one last time? Because oh my god, it's so freaking good. Probably the most underrated soundtrack ever. I freaking love it. There's one last thing I wanted to cover, and it's the multiplayer mode. Yeah. My brother and I had a lot of fun playing it together when we were kids. Well, my brother actually had most of the fun because he would always pick Eggman and spam me and spam me, and to this day he's won over 125 rounds, and yes, I'm still salty about that. <coughs> <clears throat> anyway, where was I again? Oh yeah, multiplayer. So yeah, multiplayer. It's fun. It's coolio. It's fine by me. It can get boring after a while because, you know, 
There's not much to really do other than attack and use a special move and attack and attack. Uh, God. It's fine by me, alright? But there's more to talk about this game besides multiplayer mode. There's also secret characters. Ooh. So yeah, there's also hidden characters that are only exclusive to the Xbox Live Arcade version of this game. That being Eggman, Metal Sonic, and Honey the Cat. We'll be talking more about Honey the Cat because her story is actually very interesting. Honey the Cat was originally designed by Kazunori O and Takako Kawaguchi. She was specifically designed for Sonic the Fighters in another game called Fighting Vipers. She was used as a test character for the game's development, and her data can still be found in the original arcade release. She can be hacked into the game, but it ends up being really glitchy. But Honey was added as an official character when Sonic the Fighters was re-released on the Xbox 360. That does include Eggman and Metal Sonic, who weren't actually playable in the original release. So yeah, I guess everyone wins. Sonic the Fighters isn't a perfect game. It really isn't, but I still had some fun playing it. Sure, all you can do is really spam your enemies, and yeah, there is a difficulty curve later on. Screw you, Tails, I hate you. But despite its shortcomings, it's still a good game, and I would really recommend it to those who want to play a Sonic fighting game. So, yeah, you should try it out. Hope it gets a sequel though, because it has a lot of potential. Anyway, that's been my review of Sonic the Fighters. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And remember, stay hydrated. And yes, I am dressed as Honey the Cat in the thumbnail. And no, I'm not furry. <laughs>